Hello Hunters, and welcome back to Super Fan Natural. If you like magical weapons, then boy is Supernatural the show for you. It's got lots of magical murder machines, from swords, to blades, to bones, to bone blades. However, out of all the weapons in the show, none are as well known as the Colt. The Colt is one of the biggest mysteries in the entire series. It's introduced as a magical gun that, when used with special bullets, can kill anything. Later this is proven to be a bit of an exaggeration when it doesn't work on Lucifer, and he explains that he's one of only five things in creation that the gun won't kill. Now the list of five has been the subject of much, let's call it spirited debate, and yes, I will give my take on it later, but first, there's so much more to discuss, like what makes the gun so powerful? I mean yeah, there are limits, but it's still really really deadly. Also speaking of those limits, why do only some people know about them? Did the person who made the gun know about the limits? And hey, while we're on the topic of making the Colt, why hasn't anyone made another? I mean, the obvious answer is that nobody knows how, but there are plenty of beings that want the magic revolver for one reason or another. Surely it would be possible to track down the secret formula. Now, you could very easily say that the gun's power comes from some random ass spell that can't be replicated and just leave it at that. I mean, that's basically what the show did. However, not only is that boring, I also think that the show provides us with enough lore to speculate about how the gun works in a way that makes at least a little bit of sense. As always, we gotta start with what we know. The Colt was originally created in 1835 by a man named Samuel Colt, who, in case you didn't know, was a real guy. The supernatural version of Sammy C would also go on to build an elaborate series of train tracks and churches that form a giant devil's trap, and at its center was a cemetery that contained a devil's gate which itself was locked inside a crypt which could only be opened by the cult. We don't have a lot of information about how the gun was built, however we do know some details about the night on which Samuel put it all together. If we believe John Winchester, then the cult was created on a night when two pretty significant events were happening. First, Haley's Comet flew over the earth, and second, and I quote, those men died at the Alamo. Now, there are a few things to keep in mind going forward. We don't actually know if any of that's true, the only source we have is a tidbit from John, and we don't know where he got the information. This video is going to assume that his intel was at least a little correct, but the scientist in me had to point out that this is a tertiary source at best. Also, even if John was right, we don't actually know if either of those events were of any significance to the creation process. The barrel has the phrase non timido malum, or I will fear no evil, inscribed on it, and the wooden handle is engraved with a pentagram. Beyond all that, the thing seems to be made of regular materials. When Bobby deconstructed it in order to find out how it works, he didn't mention anything strange about the metal or wood. And like, I know he wasn't doing mass spectroscopy or anything, but he's been around enough guns that I feel he could notice that there was something off about its components. However, even if the materials aren't from another world, it is possible that they contain magical properties that aren't noticeable to humans. In addition to the gun itself, Colt forged 13 special bullets that act as the second half of his creation. The Colt is capable of firing regular bullets, they just won't have any magical effects. Like the gun, we don't really know how the magic bullets were made, however we do actually know how new ones can be created. In Season 12 we learn that the replacement shots are made by bathing silver bullets in a mixture of holy oil, sage, and myrrh. A little incantation is said, and voila, you've got yourself working ammo for the magic gun. This ritual came courtesy of Ruby, and we never find out where she learned it. Normally, that wouldn't be a big deal, except that we later found out that even the Men of Letters didn't know how to make more ammo. Crowley also knew how to make more bullets, but that's not as weird since he was the King of the Crossroads, and also Ruby could have just told him how to do it. So that's what we know about its construction. Now let's talk about what it can do. The usual line is that it can kill anything, or almost anything. Despite its uber-powerful reputation, we only get to see it used against a couple of different creatures, namely vampires, demons, a hellhound, a phoenix, and the pagan god Moloch. That's a pretty diverse showing, and it's worth pointing out that among its victims are the Alpha Vampire, who's the first and most powerful of his species, and Azazel, who is one of the princes of hell and one of the most powerful demons ever. Side note, the cult kind of has a weird history with the princes of hell. Not only is it one of the few things that can kill them, it also shared screen time with three out of four of them. It was used against Azazel three separate times, and before it ultimately killed him, he would own it for about a year. Later, Ramiel would own the gun for about six years, and it kind of seemed like his prized possession. Like, maybe I'm reading this wrong, but it felt like he was more impressed with the cult than the Lance of Michael. Finally, the gun was used against Dagon, and she's ultimately the one who removed it from the show by melting it. Like I said before, Lucifer also took one of its bullets to the head, and it did hurt him a little bit. 
but ultimately he survived. So what can give something that kind of power? Let's stop beating around the bush, it probably has something to do with the comet, right? It is possible that the gun was made from a melted down angel blade or something, but it still wouldn't explain why it's so powerful, since we see that Princes of Hell can tank angel blade blows. No, it's probably the comet. Haley's Comet doesn't really have any particular meaning or importance to the show outside of this one story. However, that doesn't mean that comets and meteors in general don't have any meaning in the show. Also, I know comets and meteors aren't the same thing, but they're close enough, especially in fiction. There are three or four very important events that involve things falling out of the sky or shooting across it. The first is the fall of an angel from heaven. When one of the god squad gets the boot, their expulsion usually looks like a meteor falling to earth and if they've removed their grace in the process, that will also have a meteor-like appearance. The next cosmic comet content comes courtesy of the Red Horseman War. When War manifests physically, he can take the form of a shooting star called Wormwood, and that may or may not be his true form. Next, we have the Seal of Solomon, which is a magical jewel which can be used to open rifts into other universes. We don't really know much about the gem, however, it's heavily implied to be some kind of space rock. Finally, God himself has some association with celestial stones. He uses meteors to wipe out some of the alternate universes, and when he returns to the main universe, his arrival is heralded by a comet shower. Also, there's a theory I've seen floated around that the comet that wiped out the dinosaurs was actually what God used to punch a hole into purgatory that sucked in all the leviathans and reset the planet. There's no evidence for that, but I think it's fun. But what does this all mean? Well, we can't say for certain, but I personally take it to mean that flying space rocks act as a physical manifestation of cosmic power. So, is it possible to use all this information to figure out the cult's exact story? No, not really. There's so much that's left intentionally vague, with too many possibilities. Like I said before, the most likely answer is that someone knew a spell where you carve some fancy symbols into a gun and say some words while Haley's Common is over the earth, and boom, you've got a magical firearm. However, I believe it's more interesting to try and tie the magic of the cult into other elements of the supernatural universe, and in the spirit of that, I've come up with two alternate theories about how it works, how it was made, and why there's only one. Well, calling them theories might be a bit of a stretch, they're glorified fanfics. One of them is a bit more grounded, while the other is a little more creative and out there, but there are some common elements between them. Firstly, they both rely on Haley's Comet. Second, while Samuel Colt did build the physical gun, I don't necessarily think he was the brains behind its magical properties. After all, he would have only been 21 when the gun was made, and not super young, but probably not old enough to have invented the kind of magic needed. Finally, in both theories, the Colt's origins is tied to the Princes of Hell. Alright, let's get into it. I'll start with a slightly more grounded theory. This one postulates that the gun is the result of mortals trying to recreate angel blades. We don't know what angelic weapons are made of, just that it's some kind of silvery metal. We also know that they're God-touched, meaning that God either made them himself, or he ignited some kind of heavenly forge or something. I think it's possible that angel blades are actually made of silver that has been empowered with a spark of the divine after undergoing a kind of purification, and I think that we've actually seen this process in the form of the ritual that's used to make new cult bullets. Think about the ingredients that the silver bullets are soaked in. Holy oil, sage, and myrrh. Now, sage doesn't really play a noticeable role in the series, but the others do. Holy oil is used for a lot of things, but one that people sometimes forget about was the ability to purify and cure people who have been corrupted by the darkness. Myrrh doesn't necessarily have any connection to purification, however, it does have one to God, as it's one of the ingredients for the spell that's used to lock up his sister. I believe it's possible that at its core, the ritual is meant to purify a piece of silver so that it can hold a bit of God's power. But what about the God Touch? After all, that would be what actually provides the power, and it's not exactly an easy thing for mortals to get a hold of. However, while it's really hard to get direct God power, it is possible to repurpose divine energy from things that he touched in the past. There are several very rare objects in the world of Supernatural known as Hands of God, which the big man handled in the past, thus imbuing them with a bit of his godly finger grease. With the right know-how, it's possible for someone to draw the energy out of the object and into themselves, granting them incredible power. However, it seems like it all has to be used at once, meaning that you usually only get one single shot of god magic. I believe that Haley's Comet could be a hand of god, maybe a leftover from a time in the past when god was pissed off enough to pelt the earth with divine wrath. I think the deaths at the Alamo could have been part of a ritual to extract the comet's god power and call it to earth, 
However, instead of drawing it into a person, the magic was either drawn into or used to alter the cult itself, and basically turned it into a kind of second-hand hand of God. Essentially, the gun can't shoot out cosmic blasts, but it can imbue certain objects, say purified silver bullets, with a single saintly supercharge. Because this process was slapped together by dumbass humans, it's not particularly efficient. The energy dissipates quickly and will rush into the first thing it hits, meaning that if you miss, or even if the bullet gets stopped in midair, the power is gone. On the plus side, the Colt does give its bullets more juice than an Angel Blade, which is probably another side effect of the Colt's comparatively shoddy slapdash design. Instead of evenly distributing the divine power throughout the vessel, it just shoves a compact chaotic packet of energy into it. But how would humans even begin to figure out this process? Well, there's plenty of ways. It could just be that an angel in the past was willing to spill state secrets. There's also the possibility that a Nephilim snuck a peek behind the celestial curtain. It's also possible that Lucifer saw how God made angel blades and he wanted to recreate the process in order to arm his demonic legions. Maybe that's how he knew about the gun's limits. It's the final stage of a design that he personally spearheaded back in the day. Maybe the reason why Ramiel held such reverence for it is because he was the one in charge of finishing what his maker started. After all, he was a weapons nut. Ultimately, I think that Samuel Colt was approached to make the gun itself because whoever he made it for knew that they only had one shot at it and they wanted to get the best gun maker they could. So that's the more grounded of my theories. Now let's get into one that's a little spicier. What if the Colt wasn't really meant to be a weapon? I mean, even the actual cannon, it's not just a weapon. It also serves as a key to the Devil's Gate in Wyoming for some reason. What if that's what it was always meant to be, a key that opens a doorway into another world, and its destructive power is just a byproduct of that? What the hell am I talking about? Well, in the season 12 finale, the show introduced the concept of rifts, tears in the fabric of reality that lead to other universes. I wonder, could the cult have been made to open a rift, not to another world, but to the deepest part of hell where Lucifer's cage is. It might sound stupid, but consider what we learn about rifts in season 13. It's revealed that the demon tablet contains instructions on how to open a rift, and among the required ingredients are a grace from an archangel and the seal of Solomon, which I'll remind you is a weird space rock. What's even stranger is that Asmodeus seemed to know about the spell, implying that at some point in the past, demons got a hold of a prophet and got this juicy article out of them which is kind of supported by the fact that Cass claimed to have heard of a prophet going mad from the tablet. What if that's not all they got? What if this past prophet found and spilled instructions on how to punch a hole into the most off-limit parts of the pit? We know from Kevin that there are spells in the tablet about opening Devil's Gates, we just don't know how it works. Also, despite the fact that rifts into alternate universes were extremely rare up until Season 12, Crowley somehow knew a ritual to close them. It was pretty simple too, you just mix some stuff together in a bowl placed on top of a pentagram, then add a little holy oil and light the whole thing up. Then, well, you have to take a life, but once you do that, the closest rift will start closing up for good. We never find out where he got this trick, but I personally believe it also came from the tablet. But what does any of that have to do with the gun? Well maybe I'm losing it, but in the same way that Kevin was able to rework the demon bomb ritual into portable flares. I kind of think the cult is a perfect way to rework the rift closing spell. Like, what if you could grind up the ingredients and mix them with gunpowder? Then you pack them into bullets, wash it in holy oil, and load them into a gun that has a pentagram carved into the handle. Then when you fire, not only will you light up the ingredients, you'll send them flying towards someone in a way specifically designed to take life. It's shockingly perfect. Now I know what you're saying. Jack, you sultry slice of man. Even if that worked, it would close a rift, not open one. And yeah, if you use the exact same ingredients. I think the cult was designed to mechanize a spell with the same setup but opposite purpose. We know there is at least one ritual that sort of weakens the seal on a dimensional door by sacrificing innocent people nearby. It's the one Azazel used to chat with Lucy in the season 4 finale. What if that was just a weaker version of a more powerful spell that he didn't have the ingredients to perform? What ingredients would that be? Mostly I don't know because I'm making a lot of this up. But I do think that, like the alternate reality rift spell, you need the Seal of Solomon and Grace from an Archangel. Obviously the princes didn't have access to either of those, so they use substitutes. For the Seal, they use the Comet. I mean, it's another mysterious space rock, so sure, I would believe that it would work if it was in just the right position over Earth. For the Grace, well, that actually ties into another theory of mine. Basically, I believe that when Lucy made the princes, he imbued each one with just a teeny tiny pinch of his grace. 
I give a bit more detail in my video about the different types of demon, but essentially this would explain why they're so powerful and why Asmodeus was able to just inject Archangel Grace into himself. Anyway, in this theory, the princes used their own blood as a substitute, hoping that if all four mixed most of their blood together, it would have enough divine microparticles of grace to work. Spoilers, it didn't. That's why the gun can't actually open a portal into the cage, but it can reopen some existing doors to hell. They mixed the Hellishima globin with the rest of the ingredients, dried it all out, and ground it into a fine powder. However, instead of packing it into bullets, they mixed it with the metal for the gun itself, which would still work since the firing process would singe the inside of the barrel. Like the previous theory, I believe that Samuel Colt was commissioned to actually construct the revolver, because again, you want to have it done by someone who knows what they're doing. I don't think he actually made it during the time of the comet, but rather, the princes had it made beforehand so that they could carry out the ritual while the comet was overhead, and this detail has gotten miscommunicated over time. Anyway, time for a mini fanfic. I think the princes took the gun along with 13 hunters they had captured to Cavalry Cemetery, thinking that it was the location of Lucifer's cage. And once the comet was in the position, they started sacrificing people in order to open the gate. It worked, but they realized that it wasn't the door to the cage. This caused an argument, and in the chaos, some of the hostages managed to get loose and steal the gun back. I like to think that the gate was unstable, and Azazel accidentally got sucked inside, dropping the colt in the process. This gives the hunters a chance to grab it and threaten the other princes, maybe even shooting one or two, so that they knew it would hurt them. Whatever happens, the demons Vamoose and the hunters do their best to seal up the gate, possibly using a version of the spell we saw from Belphegor. They return to Colt and blame him for the Hellmouth, so he dedicates the rest of his life to closing it permanently. On the demon side of things, Azazel regroups with the others and finds that they're fed up with the search for Lucifer, so everyone goes their own ways with only Azazel continuing the search. And scene. So those are my ideas for what gives the Colt its crazy power. Hopefully I did a halfway decent job making them make sense, even if you don't believe them. But now the big question. Besides Archangels, what are the other things that the gun can't gank? Firstly, I'm firmly in the camp that primordial beings like the god twins and the horsemen don't count as in creation, so while the gun definitely won't kill them, they're not part of the list. The first real entry is easy. The cult almost certainly can't take out the person who has the mark of Cain. Pretty much nothing can do that except for another mark bearer with the first blade, and I just don't think it would make sense for the cult to be strong enough to undo god magic. The next two could be grouped as one, depending on your interpretation, but I'm going to count the Leviathans and Eve as two separate things that are immune to the cult. These things are ancient and have the ability to resist celestial magic, so while I think the gun might give them a nasty wound, I don't think it can fully kill them, though I'll admit I sometimes go back and forth on this issue. The last entry on my version of the official cult immunity list is one that I don't think many people think about because we never really get a full look at them. Honestly, how many people even remember the Shadim? If you don't, then let me give you a refresher on some tidbits we were given. Apparently, these things were so dark and savage that Lucifer feared them. Maybe I'm out of line here, but I feel like anything that scares the second strongest archangel and poster boy for arrogant pride probably doesn't have to worry about a magic cowboy gun. Finally, there are a couple of creatures that the gun may or may not affect, but wouldn't be on the standard five things list. Firstly, while regular Nephilim are probably vulnerable, I'm super certain that those fathered by an archangel aren't. I mean, Jack was stronger than his dad and uncles, so probably not all that hurt by the gun. The last one I'm not sure about, but I wonder if the Lovecraftian monsters Yokoth and Glathur would be susceptible to the cult's magic. I mean, they're allegedly super powerful and impossible to kill, and I don't think that they'd be on the list since they're from another universe. I don't know, it's interesting to think about. Alright hunters, that's about it for this one. Like I said, there's a lot of possibilities when it comes to the cult, I just wanted to put a couple of my theories out there. If you have an alternative theory, feel free to share it in the comments below. A little behind the scenes fun fact, as I'm writing this, it seems like this video will come out on November 2nd, which is the day the series begins in universe, so that's kind of fun. I think going forward I'm going to try to put out videos on the first Thursday of the month, but I reserve the right to post whenever I have time, so we'll see what happens. Either way, I'll have more for you next month, but for now, carry on.